This is Twit. In the meantime, though, I wanted to, since we have Tiffany on the show today, Tiffany, you co-authored an article this last summer having to do with AI and the right to be forgotten. Uh, not two concepts that I'd ever put together before. So uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that, how they collide. Sure. So I co-authored this paper with Edward Foch, Villaronga, and Peter Kaisberg. And um, it's an interesting approach, first of all, to co-authoring a paper when you have three different authors from very different disciplines. So Edward is an attorney who um, had most of his training in the EU. Peter is a researcher with a technical background. And I'm, of course, a US trained attorney. So while we all have perspectives on this, I think that this sort of interdisciplinary work, first of all, was really fascinating for me. And I think really interesting in terms of specifically discussing the technical impacts of these laws. Uh, so our paper is called Humans Forget, Machines Remember, Artificial Intelligence and the Right to be Forgotten. And this is something, this is a sort of problem that I've been thinking about for a long time. Uh, I can give you a brief overview. So the right to be forgotten is a specific right uh, that allows for EU residents to ask um, websites or organizations like, for example, Google, to delete information, for example, search results that may pertain to their own personal information. So if, in the most likely scenario, if you are someone who has committed a crime and you ask Google to remove your search results, technically under the right to be forgotten, you should have that right. Uh, you should have the right to make your anything about yourself be forgotten. Uh, so this is an interesting right, first of all, that we don't really talk about the United States because we have a almost the opposite point of view, right? We think that all speech is uh, sacred and we should have everything out there um, almost as much as possible. But the right to be forgotten is definitely entrenched in EU privacy law. The issue that we point out in our paper, though, is that it doesn't really make sense in context of big data, artificial intelligence, or machine learning. And you can stop me if this is getting too long, but the crux of the problem is that when you need to forget something, a machine doesn't forget the same way that a human forgets. When you forget something, it's not in your memory anymore, easy. If you ask an artificial intelligence system or a machine learning algorithm to forget a piece of data that's been already added into the system, either in training data or elsewhere, that is very complicated. And we have a few different explanations of why that's particularly complicated. First of all, in the law, there's no definition of what it means to delete. So we don't know if we can comply simply by overwriting whatever file that was there, by simply making a null value, by actually somehow excising it from whatever database we have or so on. Uh, that's not clear in the law. It's difficult for people to comply with it. In a general sense, it's also difficult because, you know, an AI is built on using training data to improve its model continuously. So even if you do delete the data from an AI system, that model has still been trained on the data that you input. Got it. So uh, this this seems fascinating. Uh, can you give us any takeaway or conclusion uh, that you haven't mentioned already? Sure. So I think that the most interesting example for me goes back to the idea of someone wanting to erase records of something that they've done. Mm -hmm. So if you commit a crime and um, you try to get all of those news articles about you deleted, Sure, you can do that. But if you train an AI system to determine who is more likely to be a criminal based on crimes already committed by people, that AI system already has in its you know, so-called memory, the memory of your particular crime. So even if your record is expunged, even if your, rec um, your you know, crime result was overturned, the AI system is still slightly biased in favor of determining that people who are like you are more likely to be criminals. And this goes into the whole issue of AI and criminal justice, which is you know, much broader than just AI and right to be forgotten. But mm -hmm. that's, I think, the ultimate impact of this. It's really a huge host of issues that the law just is not ready to deal with yet. So 
as far as the right to be forgotten those goes though, and the um, example that you just gave, if the AI had as part of what it was trained on uh, the information that you mentioned, but it were anonymized, would that matter? So I think that there are two ways to think about this. So if it was anonymized, then you at least don't have your personal information um, included in whatever reports may come out. And you do technically, you could say that technically the right to be forgotten was upheld in that case because no personal information was included. Mm -hmm. But I think the criminal justice aspect still plays a role because even if there's no personal information being included in, for example, uh, the recommendation that the algorithm may make as to who should be, who might be a criminal, uh, the algorithm itself might be slightly more biased, again, towards you just based on your information, not based on anything linking to your actual you know, name or any PII. Yep, absolutely. Mike, any thoughts? So, Tiffany, I'm curious, are are you and your colleagues, are you proposing legislation of some sort to deal with this? Are you thinking about a possible legislation that would take this into account somehow? Or, mm -hmm. You know, honestly, as I am not, I don't know if my co-authors are, but I think what we're really looking into right now is just generally the GDPR being I don't want to say completely inapplicable, but not quite there. Um, and it's worrying to me, and I think to my co-authors as well, that the GDPR is coming into effect very soon, next year, um, is potentially reaching out to companies all over the world. Uh, everyone will have to comply with this regulation, but we haven't actually figured out what this means. So there are issues involving the right to be forgotten in AI. Um, really, many aspects of the law in terms of machine learning and AI don't really make sense. Um, there is guidance on things like automatic data processing, uh, automatic decision making, but the law is behind what current technology is. And you can say that about most laws, right? Most of the time law is catching up to tech, but it's concerning that a law that tries to regulate so much of tech, so broadly regulate tech, is so much you know, behind what tech really is.